Hi and welcome back to Devana Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here for Slow Stitching Saturday, part two of our Borrow Table Runner. So let's get into it. everybody welcome back to the channel thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me on this beautiful Saturday although it's actually Friday for me but anyway it's an overcast day here so I do apologize if there are any shadows it is quite dark where it looks like we're going to get some rain so it's a perfect day for crafting all right so basically today as I said we are here to do the stitching part of the borrow table runner now if you haven't seen last week's video the link is down below um, you can watch that after this one if you're already here that's fine if not duck over watch that one come back and watch this one a little bit later all right so as we discussed last week we don't need any specialty stuff for this sort of thing we've got some fabrics we've got a base fabric and we've cut up our bits and pieces and or you've used your scraps and we've placed them on our base fabric now I use the uh, base glue technique you can do the basting technique with needle and thread if you want if you prefer to I just sped it a little bit up a little bit I know it goes against the principles of slow stitching but I sped it up a little bit because I didn't know how long this was going to sit around for now I have made a decision during the week that I'm going to endeavor to get this finished stitching wise by next Saturday so then I can show you how to um, put the borders on and uh, finish it all up all right now there's no quilting involved in this this is purely just like sashiko stitching except it's called borrow and borrow for those that don't know what it is is a form of japanese mending back in the day uh, medieval times basically they had to make do with what they had so nothing was discarded they got their bits of fabric they cut them up in in some cases they dyed them in earthy tones or in indigo and then they slapped that on the to that um jacket that they had that they needed to repair or even their um what they call them futons and uh is it a futon the bed that they sleep on and the bedding and all that sort of stuff so they just prolong the life of their their garments and all their household items so but today we're using the um principles behind borrow but you know we're using new fabrics we're not actually mending anything so uh, as you can see i've done a little bit of stitching and that was just to get the rhythm of it because i haven't done this before so i'm no expert i'm just showing you the principles that i have learned along the way hopefully you'll join me in some in some fun and doing it you've got yourself a cuppa now i'd just like to say thank you to everybody that sent me messages uh commented on last week's video and just really said the, how much they enjoyed doing this um i had a little bit of a laugh with sue she um sent me a message she goes you must have been reading my mind because i'm going put the green one there put a green one there and then you'd put it there <laughs> so um if for anybody that was yelling at their tv telling me where to put stuff i hope i put it in the place for you i did for sue but anybody else i don't know about but anyway just thank you so much for um the great response that we had so hopefully you like this video today we're going to be here for a little while not too long because um i've got some things that i've got to get done still today but as you can see we have already started stitching there are a few things that you are going to need you're going to need some sashiko thread you're going to need some sashiko needles okay uh this is probably the best these are the best ones that i find so that's olympus thread and the uh darama needles are my favorite and um i have where i can i have found links for them if um and they're down below for you and they're amazon links but if you're here in australia i still do have some of these supplies left so if you want any just send me a message or put me a put a comment down below and say hey i need some supplies and we can converse it might take me a day or two to see it if you comment here but if you message me over on instagram um, I will get that also on my business page so I'll either get it on Facebook or on Instagram all right so once you've got those if you don't have these and you don't want to buy any supplies which I understand if you've never done this before I totally get that so if you don't want to buy the supplies there are a couple of things that you can use um, you can use a you need a sharp needle with a large eye that is a very 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 important because otherwise you're going to strain your hand and you're not going to be able to um, do it for a long period of time the other thing that you're going to um, 
want to get is a thimble and this is a little leather thimble um, and basically it sits at the base of my finger and um, I, it helps me push it through sometimes I use it sometimes I don't so it just depends on the project that I'm using I don't very often use it with Sashiko but I pulled it out today because this is this is going through we're going through a few layers now if you don't have the cotton you can use uh, pearl 8 or pearl 12 crochet cotton um, in a 12 or you can use the um, is it sulky 12 weight cottons that you can get for your machines and stuff like that and I know that a few of my subscribers have actually um, done some big stitch quilting before so you will be able to um, you probably still got some of that in your supply so it doesn't matter what color it is either now I, I did get a question um, from a lady over on Instagram that's seen the video she asked me about the fabrics um, I did say last week that you could use anything that you want um, especially if it's the first time that you're doing and you've got a heap of scraps you can use your quilting cotton there's no as there's no rule to say that you can't use that when you think about the principles of borrow considering it is a uh, Japanese for their philosophy is nothing is wasted and they see beauty in in the mending of things so basically you can use anything I'm here to tell you that you can use anything now I don't know about the borrow police out there that probably say no you can't I'm here to tell you if you're trying it for the first time and you've got a bunch of scraps there and you've got some calico or even um, quilting cotton as a base fabric go for it give it a go it's just to learn the principles of it and then later on if you like it you can then go and get yourself some Japanese linen now I am using Japanese linen but my base fabric is just trusty old calico all right so what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a running stitch and I've already uh, threaded up although I do have a knot in my thread so it's proving to be a little bit problematic it's tiny as but what we will do is we are just going to do a basic running stitch as you can see here and I am not because this is the first time that I've done anything like this and I'm doing it with you on camera I am not getting hung up on the accuracy of my stitches I am not getting hung up on the accuracy of the spacing if you go and have a look and I'm creating a Pinterest board so by the time this video you see this video there will be a Pinterest board with different borrow techniques like pictures not techniques pictures on there for you to go and have a look and you'll you'll understand a little bit more what I'm saying and I'll leave that link down below for you so basically what that what it means is we're not going to get hung up on anything we are just going to do some running stitches but we're going to do them different ways in some cases we might put little x's in there as well so we're just going to have a lot of fun okay if you're here to be negative please leave I don't need I don't need the negativity okay and I don't get a lot of it but we occasionally get you know the quilt police turn up every now and again for a bit of a raid on the channel and so I'm guessing there's probably some borrow police out there um, so we just want to you know miss all those and uh, yeah so grab your supplies grab your cuppa if you're just sitting here and uh, watching thanks for watching sit back relax with your cuppa and watch me uh, do some stitching all right so hopefully you can see everything really clearly and the microphone is really clear probably should have asked that beforehand but anyway what I'm going to do is I am going to be bunching this up a bit as you can see so you can see I'm just sort of grabbing it and putting it out of the way and I'm starting in the middle sort of like with quilting as well we always when we start with our quilting we start in the middle and we work our way out and the reason that we do that is because things shrink in so you can see here I'm starting to get it to it's starting to shrink in a bit like I can give that a bit of a tug and <clears throat> flatten it out and whatnot but it is going to bunch up a bit and we're going to be doing a lot of stitching on this and on nearly everything that's on here is going to have some form of stitching now we don't generally in borrow they don't generally do patterns but you may do different size i've seen ones and i'll put as i said i'll have a pinterest board there for you to go and have a look at um basically you can if you were starting in the middle you can start doing it little and then you can start working your lines out longer and longer and sort of have it coming into a diamond you can as you get more experience do that sort of stuff i personally am not doing that today because i just feel that i'm not going to get that um I'm not going to get that creative I want to get the feel of doing it first so that's what I'm doing all right so I'm just putting my little trusty leather 
uh, thimble on and I've got really fat fingers <laughs> and I've been touching um, I've got a new pair of pants and it's dyed my hands <laughs> you can see they're a little bit black that's from it's not coming off on anything that was from a day ago um, and yeah <laughs> I'm not real happy about it I've scrubbed and scrubbed I'm gonna have to get some bleach onto it I think all right so I'm gonna have a sip of coffee let's get stuck into it eh all right so I'm gonna bunch it up and basically all we're going to do now you can see I have on the back we're going all the way through I have started with a knot I don't care about the knots um, because I'm gonna put in a facing over this and I'm probably gonna put a little bit of batting as well because I'm gonna put borders on it so you're not even gonna feel those knots if you can actually leave this raw you don't actually have to do anything you can have all of your things going right off the edge and then you can just square it up and have this all raw um, I'm not into that at all I prefer to have I've got um, stuff at my feet that I keep kicking um, I prefer to have because I want borders on this and um, I prefer to have a little bit of stabilizer and a bit of wadding and a bit of backing and, and all that sort of stuff but I will show you how I'm going to do it all next week all right so we have our thread and all we're going to do is just gather it up in your hand and then all we're going to do is a running stitch it's that simple and what instead of doing one stitch at a time so when we do um when we do embroidery or something like that we we tend to just do one stitch at a time with sashiko you don't you actually load your needle up um this is not as long as i normally like i have another one which i seem to have misplaced uh, there's one here this one's a bit longer so you can see here this has just got a bigger eye because I can see it because I don't have my magnifiers on. So you can see there the two different sizes. So normally I, if I've got my magnifiers, I would use that because I can load up more, but that's my sashiko that I use it. And that's quite sharp, that needle. This one here is not as sharp. Um, it is still sharp, but not as sharp as that one. And it's not as long because when you first start doing something like I've done sashiko before and I've got the hang of that and this is exactly the same but with my sashiko I'm generally following a pattern so this one I'm free handing like I'm just eyeballing it and so I want to get the feel of it so I'm guessing by the time I'm finished this my stitches will be I'll have a good feel of it my stitches will be a little bit more consistent um, although that is not really what I'm going for I am going for quite a rustic look and um, as I said, I have a knot in this thread. So I'm just gonna have to tug on it to get it to come through. Yeah. I just don't wanna waste the thread, that's all, actually. I might just... I might just get... See, now I can't feel it. Aha, there it is. Oh, look I've only got a little bit and then I'm past it I'll just have to persevere so sorry about that I didn't even realize it must have been actually in it when I opened it because it didn't it didn't seem to um and yes I'm a thread licker I'm sorry for those that are cringing right now all right so anyway back to the stitching so basically um we're just loading up our needle and we're getting trying to get consistent bites of the fabric and loading up that needle okay so this is where this comes in handy because you can push it and then it gives you more needle to grab okay we've got that one this should get rid of that knot now i think it's right at the end there we go so you can see there that we've got our running stitch through and when i um come to the edge i'm going to go off and I go right off and then I just come across maybe quarter of an inch depending on how close you want your threads your thread lines and you can see that that's just gone off the edge and I'll cut that a bit closer for you that's just gone off the edge and you can see I'm sort of alternating and I don't want all my threads to be lined up either I sort of I'm um, you can have them lined up if you want and i have seen incidences where it's like that but for me personally today what i'm going for is i'm sort of doing it in like a brick pattern does that make sense and then when i come back i'm just going to spin that around and keep going 
so what has everybody been up to leave me a comment down below tell me what you're working on are you actually doing something like this along with me are you maybe doing some sashiko or are you doing some other form of needlework well that's so much better when we don't have a knot in it <laughs> so you can see there just biting a little bit at a time holding up that um needle and when I get close to the end, I don't want to come out of the fabric because I want to go down over the edge of the fabric. So you can see there, my needle's gone in over the edge of the fabric. And I'll just do one stitch here so you can see. And that's going to hold that fabric in place. And then I will just come up for the next row to show you. So I'm coming up off the fabric again. And then I'll continue on. And just brick it so you can see if I was using a lo longer needle I could actually get more on the um, onto the needle which means that um, I could probably do it a little bit quicker so you can see how that's sort of bunching up as well okay so we're almost to the end of this one and then I'll probably change direction so I'll do a like this one's my horizontal one then I might do a uh, vertical one And as I, as I was saying, I've also left um, left my all my edges raw, and that means that as it goes on and gets used and all the rest of it, it will actually become a little bit fluffy around the edges and just give it a little bit of character. So you can see here, I'm going to load up this whole needle, push that through as far as I can so I can have something to grab. You can see there that I've just done that whole row okay and that's sort of what you want to go for you want to um, you want to have a needle that's long enough to um, load up I'm getting the feel of this now like because there's no um, essentially there's no nothing I've got to follow so if I if it's a little bit wonky I'm not I'm not entirely worried about it because the simple fact is that um, it's just gonna be stitched how it is It'd be good if I stop unthreading my needle though. <laughs> Alright, so this, uh, this is pretty much the last run that I'm going to do on this. And then I'll just show you how I'm going to fin finish it off. And like I said, we just start in the middle and we work our way. Alright, that's going to go underneath because we're going to finish that off. I'll pull that through. And I'll straighten that out. So you can see there, our first patch. So you can imagine this all done all over. It's going to look amazing once it's done. I'm so excited to have it done. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I've just got that doubled up a bit. Which one is it? That one? That one. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do now is, like with Sashika, I'm going to weave it. And so I'm just going to go around. Each of my threads. And, you know, if you find that it's really bunched up, just give it a little bit of a gentle tug to get that um, thread to relax. And I'm just going to weave about half an inch and then I'll come back the other way until I come sort of back where I started and then I can just snip that little bit off there you go. Those little things need to be sharp and they've been used a bit 
All right, so that is our first patch done. How do you like that? That does look really good. I like it. I am liking it a lot. And I'm so glad that I ended up going with the cream. The the white was, you can see there, the white would just be too stark on it. While the white looks absolutely stunning on the, um, on the blue, I just think with this one there was just a little bit more cream um, in it. All right, so I'll just grab another thread. And again, um, as I said, I don't care about knots in the back because I am going to have uh, interfacing and whatnot on it. That is really tight for some reason. I'm just going to um, bear with me for a sec. I'm just going to, I think Narrowly actually used it last time she was mucking around doing some quilting she was using it. All right, I've adjusted that. Now that's feeling a lot better. All right, so now we've finished off that thread. I've shown you how to weave it through. Now we're going to go a different way. Now you don't have to. So I've just started on that pink, um, that pink one there on top, and I've gone this way. Now I don't necessarily have to go vertical or horizontal. I can do it all. Um, horizontal if I want or I can do it the other way but I'm going to mix and match now I'm not going to do every single patch so I will just pick a section so you can see here on this section here I've got a lot of little ones now I might do a couple of little ones that are a bit different like like this and then do some horizontal but I'm going to work here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going um, vertical here but then down here I might go horizontal so we're just gonna go and do what we what we do and see where we end up and I'm just going to let the the flow of it take its take its course basically so I'm going to turn it because now I'm going this way and I'm just going and I've started up on this one here just so I can because this edge hasn't got anything on it so I'm just gonna keep going and back a little bit now again I want to make sure that I am getting over the edge in not in every instance but in some instances I'm getting over the edge because that will hold everything in place and as I said I am going to just continue on until I get down to this bottom one that was a bit big that bit so you just want to get that rocking motion happening and you'll be surprised it doesn't really put a lot of strain on your hands either and I don't like to work with like I see some people that do it and they work with really long pieces of thread and I'm not there yet <laughs> I am so not there so I'm just changing direction now and I'm going to come back. So you can see there that it's just it's just gonna look amazing when it's done I just love the look of it I, I really do yeah and you can use bits and pieces on like if you want to get um, 
where you're trying to follow a pattern or whatever you can see on some of this um, fabric that there's lines so I can essentially um, follow those lines so for this little line here that you've got I've followed the edge of it now I can go up the center and then come back down on the other side still trying to find my rhythm of it um, because it's like with Sashiko you like most of the stuff that I've done you're following a pattern so it, like it's printed on there so it makes it super easy so this would be really good to practice for when you do sashi like but even still like you anything you read about it they use chalks and stuff like that where they mark things out and and whatnot so they don't always do it f the sashiko freehand so um but this is all freehand and you know like with um most things there's auspicious different auspicious uh designs that they use and um, different meanings to the designs and stuff that they use in Sashiko. We have been puppy sitting this week. That's what the scratch on my hand is. I don't want a puppy sitting again. I forgot how menacing puppies are. <laughs> my cats haven't been impressed at all. <laughs> Not even one bit. Although Arlo is trying to be the tough guy and um, <laughs> she, she was playing with her. <laughs> I'm sure that if the cat could talk, she'd say no, she wasn't. But she was playing with her, for sure. So you can see there that I've just got it. I'm coming down, and it's um, I'm liking it. I'm really liking. It. What do you think, guys? Right, uh, leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Like, it's a little bit like I'm still trying to get my um you know find my rhythm and whatnot but like even still like by the time it's finished it's gonna look pretty good I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to being able to use it too just have to keep my husband away from it so yeah the puppy <laughs> she ended up having to get banished to the kennel out the back because uh, she kept coming out here and Oh, what a menace I lost three three skeins of floss while I wasn't looking <laughs> look I turn around she's got three skeins of floss hanging out of her mouth I'm like yeah no you need to be outside now because uh, Nera Lee is actually the one that's um, supposed to be puppy sitting but she's been at work all week and so today's the first day that she's um she's been home <laughs> to have the puppy and tomorrow it goes off to its owner um yeah so they they bought it last week and it's been here since it's been here since monday afternoon it, it they got it sunday of last week i think it was and it's been here there since, and it stayed a night at um at grandma's house <laughs> and then came here because grandma works no she wasn't gonna be home she was doing long hours and so we said yeah we I'm home all the time but she ended up getting banished to the the kennel anyway because I couldn't get anything done trying to talk on the phone she was yelping and then she was getting into my floss and I'm like yeah no you need to go outside so we've got this like the old chicken coop but it's one of those uh, chicken tractors so you can wheel it around the yard 
and so we just wheeled it down from the back and it's you know it's clean and whatnot and it's a big enough area for a puppy that's only this big and it's like it's enough it's big enough to fit five chickens so it's it's huge um but yeah and god only knows what the neighbors thought because she's like she's in there and anybody think that you've just like you're torturing her because you've left her alone and she's like out there howling and carrying on um, I'll, I'll into, I've got some pictures of her while she was being cute and then somewhere she's not being so cute <laughs> not finerally anyway <laughs> and um, yeah I'll insert some pictures for you but yeah I can honestly say I will not be uh, puppy sitting anytime soon so anybody that was thinking of asking me to puppy, sit, uh, puppy sit the answer is a definitive no <laughs> I'm not doing that get my rhythm for when I'm turning yeah that's what I need to do I just need to get my rhythm when I'm turning and then I'll be good It'll be interesting to see, like, from where, like, we know, because we know that I've started in the middle, and it'll be interesting to see what it looks like by the time I get to, you know, that I've done the whole thing. But I'm liking it. Like, what do you think, guys? I think it looks really good. I'm, I'm I don't know about anybody else, but I like it. <laughs> Lucky, because I'm the one that's got to live with it, eh? <laughs> All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this one here. just might do um, might just do a little cross here and that'll get me to where I need to go So now I'm going, because these are overlapped, so I'm going through um, the backing fabric. I'm also going through the uh, top one here, and then there's this one here, this one here, and then that one there. So there's a fair bit of stuff going on there. So you will, you like, you'll think that you might not use your, your thimble, but you will need to in some cases, especially when there's lots of, bits and pieces like that that you're going through I think I need to like practicing getting consistency is the one like I don't know I just find it a little bit difficult when I'm trying to um, you know do load up the needle it's um, a little bit tricky but I think as time goes on I will get the hang of it so I'm just weaving again I'll go down and then I'll come back and that just um, finishes it off okay. 
I reckon once you get the, the swing of this, you, you'd end up doing, like, it wouldn't take you long to stitch it at all. And, like, especially if you were just doing it um, in one direction, like, if you were just going up and back. But this particular, like, I don't like it like that. Like, I've seen a couple, and it just doesn't appeal to me. I really like the, like, the uneven of it, unevenness of it, the, the fact that it's going to get a little bit... Um, fluffy around the edges like all the raw edges and stuff like that i just really like that it's it's very organic looking very rustic looking and i like that i i do like that sort of look would i like a whole house like that probably not but every now and again just a little piece of it every now and again most definitely So keep it um so i'm not sure if anybody goes onto the community tab or not but we've got a community tab here on the channel just keep an eye on there and i'll um i'll start putting some progress pictures up there for you and um that way you can uh, see what i'm see how far i've got and i'll probably just do a little bit each day um but my goal is to definitely have it done um done by next week so we can put like put the borders on and and um so the machine the sewing machine will come out but i will also um talk about how you can actually do it all by hand you don't necessarily have to pull the sewing machine out and i may do one seam i'll give it a go it's not my forte but i'll give it a go and um just show you how um i sew it on like i'm no expert at it because i avoid it like the plague i don't like to piece things together by hand but um, I will give you the option to, to how to do that and you can have a go if you want to but just so you know I will only be showing you probably on the short border and then the rest I will, I will be uh, doing on the machine so <laughs> just fair warn fair warning there okay um, I'm keen but I'm not that keen and and the, you know like but everything else 
you never know I might end up really enjoying putting it together like that but we'll just have to wait and see won't we <laughs> So yeah, keep an eye out on the community tab and um, that way you can see the progress as well. And if you're in our Facebook group, don't forget if you're working on it, share your progress too during the week. I'd really like to, to um, see your progress as well. Um, hopefully I will get better at consistency with my um, stitches. At the moment, I'm not doing too crush hot. <laughs> but I will get there it's like anything it takes practice you know it might be two or three but as I said I just like it I like that that it's I guess because I'm a quilter and because I make bags and all the things that are have to be so precise and all the counting that I do with cross stitch and all the rest of it getting something like this where you don't have to count you don't have to measure and you just go for it is so freeing to me and whether I'm doing it right or wrong I don't know but in my eyes if if I'm getting enjoyment out of it and it's freeing to me and it's not taking brain power and it's just I can sit down and I can just go for it and it doesn't matter what it looks like at the end I mean obviously I want it to look good but you know like it doesn't matter if if all the stitches are perfect it doesn't matter if you know I've got um a bigger space between rows than I do on the other one you know like and it doesn't matter if I've got little circles happening or just yeah like it doesn't matter um I just like the fact that it can just do its thing and it's just so the word the only word that comes to mind is organic it's organic looking or rustic looking you know and when you consider that this was born out of necessity in medieval times I'm guessing a lot of peasants like it's a peasant um craft and so they're always they just do the best that they can and and yeah and they always just look amazing to me all their work always looks amazing I wish I was um able to use both <laughs> stitch both ways I wouldn't have to keep turning my piece <laughs> oh it's probably making you guys dizzy sorry but I, I'm, I'm just not that skilled so you can see there like I'm going through quite a number of layers there and I've only just done the one stitch because it was quite um I couldn't load the needle up so that the thimble is coming in handy when I'm going through two or three pieces where they join and yeah I'm saying load up the needle but I I'm not loading it up too much because I think that that will just put strain on my hand and I'm trying to avoid that because I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to strain my hand where it's easy to get through I will just load up the needle and go for it So every now and again I'm just going to add a little cross into it.
all right so you can see there that it's coming along nicely so I've got a little bit more to do in there going up and down but I've gone across this way and I'm just going to continue on doing that all right so you can see there that it's coming along really nicely and I've got a you know I've got a fair way to go but as I said head to our community tab and that way you can keep it I will post up every couple of days um, on what I'm doing and and the progress that I made so head on over make sure you give that picture a like and everything and and um, if you're in our Facebook group or over on Instagram share your progress with me that if you're doing it as well and um, yeah and that way I can see what you're up to as well and see what your pieces look like because I'd be interested to see how everybody goes but I am going to uh, head off now because I've got a few things that I've still got to do today but you can see there that it's super easy to do I'm going to do some more of this tonight because I'll be able to, I've got a, a little bit of a um, get together. So I'll be able to just sit there and do this without really having to think about anything. I don't have to worry about counting. People can talk to me and I can be involved in the conversation as well. So if you've made it this far and you like this video today, please give it a thumbs up down below. And if you're new here and you've yet to subscribe, or even if you're a returning viewer and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it. And then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts. Make sure you set it to all notifications um as always leave me a comment down below i'd love to hear what you've got to say and um that's it from me today have a wonderful day everybody and get lots of stitching in and i will see you all again next time bye for now